Wilmette's kind of unusual in that from the lake up to Ridge Road was Wilmette. From Ridge Road to Locust officially, that was the village of Gross Point. And they were two very different communities. Gross Point was founded by German immigrants who came here starting in the late 1830s. Most of them were Catholic, and a lot of them farmed. Uh, there were a number of them who ran businesses, uh, general stores, saloons, dry goods businesses, that kind of thing, lumber yards. <laughs> By contrast, Wilmette was largely second or third generation who had immigrated initially to the East Coast and then come to Wilmette. Early on, they were working together. There weren't many people here, um, even though they had a lot of differences. So German-speaking Catholics versus English-speaking Protestants. And they did fall out on religious grounds and, and, and to some extent on language. And so these were, in 1924, was the beginning of them merging the two communities. <laughs> No Man's Land is where Plaza del Lago is now, if you know, and all the high rises. It was just a, a small triangle of land that was situated between Wilmette and Kenilworth. The two structures that initially went up in the mid-20s were the, the Teatro del Lago movie theater and what's now known as Plaza del Lago, which originally was called Spanish Court. That was one of the early shopping centers. So cars were relatively new in the 20s, right? So the idea that you could drive to the shopping uh, mall and you could park your car and then go shop at a number of different stores was a new idea. They started building two very elaborate beach clubs, and the idea was that this whole area was going to be developed in the 20s to attract wealthy people, and it was supposed to be a glamorous area. They finished the shopping center and the movie theater, but then the depression hit, and the two beach clubs were just partially built. Starting in the 30s, the area transitioned to stands that sold fireworks. There were hot dog stands, uh, hamburger joints, an ice cream parlor. So these were very small kind of mom and pop businesses. So instead of attracting people who were wealthy, they were attracting anybody who wanted to come. How did the residents of Wilmot feel about it? Oh, they were violently opposed to the area. It was out of their jurisdiction. They have very nice houses around there, and in their backyard were these little, you know, like beachfront shanty cottages, you know, that were selling fireworks and that kind of thing. They also uh, showed movies on Sunday, which, you know, that was forbidden in Wilmot. The residents and the property owners of No Man's Land fought the village of Wilmette for, I want to say, about 20 years. Finally, the uh, annexation went through in 1942.